My name is Patty Pond, and thank you very much for having me this evening. What is art anyway? Art is business. Art is business. Now, business is something that creates profit for its shareholder. And when we hear the word profit, we automatically think of financial gain. But the definition of profit also includes to obtain advantage or benefit. Art, artists, generate advantage and benefit for our citizens, our neighborhoods, our communities, and our country. Business is something that has a purpose, a why. Well, art has many purposes, many whys. Art is in the business of telling our stories and shaping our identities, both here and abroad. Think about next year when we celebrate Canada's 150th birthday. And as we tell the stories that celebrate our history and look forward to the future, think of the stories that will be told through our music, through films, books, paintings, sculptures, dance, festivals, theater, all created by and with artists. Art is in the business of bringing people together, of connecting us, of showing us how we belong. In 2011, Canadians report, 83% of Canadians reported that they attended at least one live arts or performance event. Art is in the business of developing and inspiring our youth helping them find their own voice, build their confidence, make them better team players and more engaged citizens. Art is also in the business of challenging the status quo, of giving us new ways to view the world and our place in it. And of course, art is in the business of generating economic impact taxes, entertainment dollars spent, employment, cultural tourism, on and on. So much so, as a matter of fact, arts and culture and heritage generated or contributed $54 billion to Canada's GDP in 2014. Now, compare that to the same year, accommodation and food services industry, $30.6 billion, and twice as much as agriculture, forestry, fishing, and hunting combined at $23.9 billion. In 2014, arts and culture workers were numbering over 630,000 people. That's pretty good job creation. And as I've said already, when we think about the social capital, the social return that the arts bring to our citizens, to our communities, it's about bringing a shared prosperity for all of us, not just some of us. So let's think about prosperity. Again, like profit, we often just think about the material wealth. But I'd invite you to consider a wider meaning. The root of the word prosperous comes from the Latin prosperous, which means doing well. So how does a healthy arts sector play a big role in helping our communities do well? The business of the arts relies on an entire ecosystem, from the artists, who are the idea generators, the creators, the interpreters, the people who've put in the 10,000 plus hours to hone their skills and achieve mastery, to the infrastructure, the tools, the venues, the funding, the organizations, the administrators, the volunteers, the champions, the donors, the performances, the policies, the products, the tours, and the list goes on and on. How do we ensure that that ecosystem where artists and the arts sector reside, prosper? How do we help them do well so that they can continue to engage us, to tell our stories, to help our youth, to connect us? Now let's talk about these artists for a moment. You know, the ones who we want to tell our stories and reflect who we are as Canadians and celebrate our past and tell us about our futures. Artists are creative entrepreneurs they're also astonishingly undervalued. In Canada, the median income for an artist is $21,600. 
That's 43% lower than the median income of the overall labor force at $37,900. And yet, how many of us, myself included, have asked artists to donate their work or do it for free in support of our cause because it's really important and it will be really great experience for them and wonderful exposure. When we know that the only thing you get from exposure is hypothermia. <laughs> we always refer to starving artists well, it's because we keep them that way. So, if we want the arts to continue to generate the returns that I've talked about in a meaningful and vital way, then we actually need to take the business of art more seriously. When the sector is working so hard to survive, how can it possibly live up to its potential? How will we not miss opportunities to generate greater value for our citizens and our communities? The arts ecosystem is getting more complex with the advent and advancement of digital technologies and the pace of change. Now we're all being invited to be content creators and movie producers and photographers. And actually that's kind of great. More people living more creative lives is a really important part of a healthy arts ecosystem. But, as we've learned from science, any healthy, living, breathing ecosystem has great interdependencies. You can't have one part of the system thrive without looking at all parts of the system and ensuring that there's support. Here in Calgary, we just had the 40th, 45th annual Juno Awards this past April, and from what we're told, it was one of the most successful in a long time. And really, it wouldn't have been without a really strong local music scene. And we know there's more to go. But without that consistent presence, that consistent level of opportunities and investment in the infrastructure and in the people, you can't bring a Junos here and have it generate between 10 and $12 million into the local economy in the span of five days. You cannot have one part of the system working and thriving without looking at the other parts of the system. So the health and vitality of the whole sector, the whole ecosystem, determines how much shared prosperity the arts can manifest for our citizens and our communities. So what do we need to do to ensure that our communities are doing well and that the creators, the storytellers, the disseminators of arts, artists, prosper? How can the business of the arts continue to thrive and be a vital contributor to our future? I think you actually all know the answer. And the answer is, Show me the, actually, show them the money. <laughs> Thank you.